two Stuart Sirius steam engines. This one is part nine. Now the green engine has finally been rebuilt, this video shows each one running on the bench using compressed air. Even though these are both Stuart Sirius models, they're actually quite different to each other. The green engine is slightly taller than the red one, and that's because the steam chest on the top is different on both of them. But apart from the colour and the fittings and the machining quality, they're both very similar. A while ago, via eBay, I bought quite a lot of these. They are spring clips for tightening hoses onto pieces of tubing. I thought it would be a better idea to use these than the cable ties that I normally use. In each of the packs, the spring clips are different sizes, and this is what you do with them. You open them with a pair of pliers, then you slide the spring clip onto the piece of tubing, Fit the tubing to the steam union and then once again using the pair of pliers you open the spring clip and move it into the correct position, as shown here on the green engine. This is a very good and very quick way of holding a piece of silicone rubber tubing onto the end of a steam fitting. I'm running the green engine at lower pressure. Without this spring clip, if I raise the pressure, the pipe would blow off the fitting, but with the spring clip I can raise the pressure of air in the tubing to quite a high level. It's very clear to me, watching and listening to this image, that the green engine is running very well. Time to turn up the pressure and see what it's like at a higher speed. I'll do this in stages and eventually it will reach its maximum speed. The maximum speed of this engine is relative to the pressure of the air being fed to it. I'm switching the airline from the green engine to the red one. This engine runs very well indeed. It's from an Alco Firefly World War II generating set. I want to turn up the air pressure on this one. The engine runs a lot faster than the green one because the exhaust pipe is a larger diameter. I was always puzzled why this engine didn't leak oil from the end of the steam chest where the piston valve is. And that's because the hole at this end is not drilled all the way through. This very useful fitting is the crankcase air vent on the red engine. You can open and close it. You open it when you run the engine and when you're finished you close it, but this tends to close itself. The red engine has a regulator control valve in the center and it also has a different arrangement for filling the crankcase with oil. It's quite a different layout to the green engine. Just like the other engine it has a dipstick but you have to be careful when you put this back into the engine that you don't foul any parts inside. Both of these engines are very similar mechanically. They both have slight run out on the flywheel and also on the red engine, there is a cutaway here. I've seen this before on cast bases, and I think it's just to make sure that you don't snap off the casting if you bolt the engine down unevenly, because this part of the casting sticks out a long way. A drain cock is fitted to the inlet manifold, which is very useful for oiling the engine when running using compressed air. When I turn the engine around, you can see that the drain cocks are quite different to the ones that I fitted to the green one. On the green engine, originally there was an attempt to make the drain cocks look like this, but they looked entirely different. And for these drain cocks to look good, they both need to be the same. I fitted a pair of drain cocks to the green engine, which are of the taper plug type. The timing of the red engine is slightly more advanced than the green one and for that reason, the green engine will actually run slower than the red one. I will illustrate this in the next clip. I'm very pleased with the way this engine's turned out. It's quite a long way from the condition it was in when I received it. I think I'm going to make a slightly larger diameter exhaust pipe to fit this engine though. Stuart Sirius steam engines 
are twin cylinder single acting machines. They are capable of running at very high pressures and a lot of them were used in model hydroplanes with a flash steam boiler system. When I was filming this video I did notice that both of the engines squeak a little bit. The squeaking noise is air escaping from the piston well. But there's plenty of power and they both run well. In this clip you can see the oil vapour coming out of the exhaust pipe. And later on when I run the green engine at a very high speed ice forms on the manifold and the pipe. The more I look at the green engine though, the more I realise it does need a larger diameter exhaust pipe. Just before I go, I'd just like to show you that both of the engines have end float on the crankshaft. This really is not a problem and I cannot be bothered going into obsess mode to fix it. This is the high speed run where ice actually forms on the manifold and the exhaust pipe. Yes, it's real ice and it's very cold. In possibly a futile attempt to stop the brass from tarnishing, I'm removing all of the condensation. I'm going to compare the amount of play on this component, both on the green engine and the red one. And although the shafts feel quite different, the amount of movement is about the same. You will also see me compare the end float on the crankshaft of both of the engines. That's it from me, stay safe, stay healthy, thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Main Steam Models website and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists you can actually watch the videos back to back.